if we know how to use face detection in Scratch. We can use it for plenty of engaging coding activities. For example, our face can be a motion controller for a Scratch game. Face detection activity number two. Uh, once again, we are in Scratch Lab app. We use face sensing extension for this version of Scratch. And now, uh, instead of trying to apply some kind of a visual effect on our face, we will try to use our face as an interface for Scratch because tracking our face gives us some useful parameters that we could apply into other parts of our application. For example, we have such parameters as face tilt. This is the angle that our face is uh, tilt to. And we have the parameter of face size. So if my face is further from the camera or if, if it is closer, then the face size changes. And these parameters could be used to control our sprite and then furthermore control, uh, for example, some kind of a game that we made in Scratch. Let's simply try to rotate the cat the same way as we rotate our face. It's very easy. I just have to uh, take the forever loop and the rotation motion point in direction. And then inst instead of an angle, I put this face tilt block over here. I just add the green flag on top and start the script and look, the cat turns exactly the same way as my head. And in the same way, I, I could apply my face size to the size of this cat sprite. So if I take looks, and change set size to face size, the cat size will change accordingly to the size of my face in the camera. But the face tilt parameter and the face size are just plain numbers, so I could control any parameter of, uh, of the sprite with my head. For example, also the movement of the cat could, could be controlled not only by tracking my face, but also by the rotation of my face. I could go to, to motion again and use the blot set, set x2, set x2, the tilt of my face. I remove changing of the size uh, to make it more clear. And now look that turning my head controls the movement of the cat. But since my head can only rotate from the angle uh, close, a bit close to zero, I, I cannot move my head like this, but the final uh, angle would be zero and the maximum would be um, 120, something like this, 180. And the position of the cat in the screen is like from minus 200 to 200. I would have to modify this face tilt parameter to something like Let's just simply multi multiply it. Multiply my face tilt by two. And now the cat moves in a wider range, but only on the on the second half of the of the screen. If I wanted to move in the whole uh, area of the screen, I have to move it until the minus 200. So I have to also divided by 90 degrees from the face tilt and multiply it by two is not enough, multiply it by four. So right now you see that the cat moves accordingly to the tilt of my head on, in, on the whole range of the screen. And I could use it use this pattern to control some kind of uh, game, for example, catching catching something falling, falling from the top of the screen, catching apples, very simple uh, scratch projects, to which we could add the motion control from our head. And any other parameters of this sprite, such as, I don't know, such as, for example, the color effect, change set color effect to the face size, for example, would change the color of the cat accordingly to the uh, size of my head and the tilt changes the cat's position. So this is one example how we can apply some motion control from video camera 
from face detection into our own scratch application. The other useful block we have is uh, when this sprite touches a nose. And this is very funny to use. I can delete this by now. And this block gives me a possibility to perform some kind of an action when I touch the object with my face. I touch the sprite with my nose, then it can perf perform something. For example, I can make the uh, cat run away from me if I use the motion glide in one second to random position. Now, whenever I touch the cat with my nose, you see that it runs away from me. Let's make it a bit faster. To give it some more action, let's add some sound to it, like the famous meow sound from scratch. Okay, so let's, so let's make some kind of a game from it. Let's delete the sprite and make a new one. For example, let's use the balloon. And we have a game in which we have a balloon that is constantly moving around the screen. So I use forever loop, I use motion glide, one second random position, I apply green flag to it, and let's start it. Okay, so I have a balloon that moves around the screen. Let's make it a bit smaller size maybe like 50 so it will be harder to catch and the point of my game is to uh, to catch the balloon with my nose so then it would pop let's add the block when this sprite touches a nose then let's play a sound pop and let's add some kind of a popping <clears throat> explosion animation let's make it very simple I go to costumes, I delete this one and this one, let's add a new one, and let's add just something like this. like simple drawing of an explosion, sunny explosion. Okay, and now I get back into coding and let's just add whenever I touch this sprite, play the sound and then looks next costume. So it goes into this explosion costume and next costume again. So it turn, returns back to the blue balloon. And let's add some, some weight block between them. For example, 0 0.2 seconds. And now when I touch the, I try to touch the balloon. And you see it pops. Whoa, it goes fast. It's not that easy. I make it a bit bigger for the sake of this, uh, for, for this tutorial so I can catch it. Okay, so now I can pop the balloon with my nose. And as in any, uh, any game, it's good to track the progress. So let's add some points, variables, make a variable points. And let's just add whenever I pop the balloon, change the points variable by one. Okay, so I have counting, counting points, point, one point, point, two points, three points, four points. So right now we have an objective of our game, which is popping the balloon and we can track our progress with points, but there is no stake in this game. Like I cannot lose. If I cannot lose it, it's no fun. So let's add some condition when I lose the game and we can try to do something like this, that there is another balloon on the screen, I duplicate this sprite 
and the second balloon is gonna be a different color for example red or, or pink let's make it pink we have a pink balloon this one moves the same way as the blue one goal of the pink balloon oh it's a spiky balloon <laughs> uh, the goal of the pink balloon is that i cannot touch it whenever i touch the pink balloon i lose the game i lose the points so uh, i have to catch the blue balloon but avoid the pink one so i have to modify the script of the blue of the pink balloon that whenever the sprite touches the pink balloon the points don't change by one but they are set to zero i lose all the points when i touch the pink balloon and to make it even harder i will make the pink balloon bigger okay and now i have to avoid the pink balloon Woo! and catch the blue one Woo! Ah, i lost it okay so in this activity we used our face face detection uh, algorithm to track our face and instead of applying some face filter to it we used our face as an interface to our game to our scratch application uh, we tried to we, we controlled some of the parameters of the sprite and we could also use collision detection to control a game about catching balloons and i hope this short tutorial will give you some inspiration how can you apply some motion control by face detection in your scratch projects